What's going on guys, Counting Gains back here again with another reaction. So today we got the Dangerous Rise of Andrew Tate documentary 2023. This was released back a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, back in January guys. Now it's basically where a filmist, film journalist Matt Shia has entered the world of social media personality, multi-level marketing scheme and webcam business. Mr. Andrew Tate. So he traveled to Romania and it's going to be basically a documentary about Andrew Tate's life before he got locked up, guys. So let's let the propaganda ensue because obviously we all know Tate's innocent, all that, all that good stuff, guys. But let's see what the propaganda machine has been running and telling about Tate. I didn't get to watch this. This was actually free on BBC3, but we can't watch it here in Ireland. So I had to find a YouTube channel that actually you know had it up on their channel so this one should be super interesting guys i haven't watched it yet either i didn't even know they had the documentary out yet let's get straight to it make sure to hit that subscribe button go over to my patreon where if this video gets blocked it'll be on my patreon as well so yeah sign up to my patreon as well guys it's almost free two year a month five year a month whatever you want to um help me with helps the channel it helps me do this full time guys and i love you all as always let's get it do you ever wonder why some people who you've never heard of before all of a sudden appear everywhere oh my god we're not even 10 seconds in guys everyone has heard of tate before man the guy was like on big brother he was on everything you know you know he didn't just pop out of nowhere guys he was literally the biggest most google guy in the world andrew tate is an anglo-american kickboxer turned influencer anglo-american okay that means he's british and american whose extreme misogynist videos have helped make him the most viral man in the world. He's not misogynistic at all, guys. He just trolls a lot, right? It's welcome to the internet type thing, you know? Bang out the machete, boom in her face, and then grip her up by the neck. But like, shut up, bitch! On December... That's taken out of context, guys. This, this propaganda machine that's running nowadays is just insane, you know? I'm just gonna break this one down. This might be like two hours long, but I don't care, man. This, this propaganda machine that they're running in, in, in Britain or wherever Vice documentary is going, Vice are just scumbags, man. On 29th, he and his brother were arrested by Romanian police as part of a rape and human trafficking investigation. The Matrix has attacked me. A few months before their arrest, I was in Romania trying to get access to their so-called secret society, the War Room. The War Room is the most powerful network on the face of the planet today. Andrew Tate. To get inside, I had agreed to endure a professional cage fight in Romania. I know he's gonna Come lose, on, but wow, he's actually in there. Along with a hundred Fair play to him, he actually got into the ring. You know what I mean? That's pretty bad ass thing to do. Eight super fans. We shouldn't be slaves. We shouldn't be working nine to five jobs. I need to grow. I need to get better. I need to evolve. I'm not tough on myself. Nobody else will be. That's what I learned from Andrew Tate. The shiny hole. Hold on to What I found out. My plan was to sow anarchy. Is that the real story? See, a lot of people just, and the government, and like all the governments hate him just because he wants men to like rebel, own their own business, and be like really masculine. And a lot of the governments just don't want that anymore, guys. You know, that's not even controversial. That's just how it is, man. That's just, this is how it is, man. You know. Story. This is definitely a hit piece. I don't things. care. Began years ago. <laughs> there's not a single female complaining. Do you think planet. there's not a single no, no, female no. complaining? Have you seen one? Tell me. My ex-boyfriend was radicalized by Angie Tate. What does that mean? Dude, people get radicalized by ISIS. People get radicalized by everything. It, it's not on the person. The per, it, Tate doesn't have a responsibility, guys. To, you know, People get radicalized by Eminem, by rap music, by rock music, by heavy metal music. Heavy metal music is much worse than rap music, in my personal opinion. The lyrics and what they portray is horrendous. So, And movies as well, guys. Are people not influenced by movies? This is, this is already just... We're not even two minutes in. It's just... This is already just propaganda, guys. He was sweet, and I got vulnerable. People don't know what he's done. <sighs> My birthday. Let's get it. If you haven't heard of Ant Tari. Andrew Tate yet, it's only a matter of time before he pops up on your newsfeed. His videos have been viewed over 11 billion times, and in July he was more Googled than Kim Kardashian and Donald Trump. He's been called the king of toxic masculinity. He has said that rape victims should, quote, bear responsibility for being raped. We're about to enter his compound in... That's not exactly what he said, guys. He's saying that, you know, don't make stupid decisions. If I go myself as a six foot three, 250 pound man down some dangerous place in Dublin and I get my ass kicked and, and killed, 
you know, I have a little bit of responsibility for that. Now, it doesn't mean that I, it was wrong for that to happen to me, but I do bear responsibility for my own safety. You know what I'm saying? Like I bear responsibility for my girlfriend's safety. You know what I'm saying? I tell her, don't go down these dangerous places in Dublin. And she listens to me, guys. Like it would just be stupid to, to think that he thinks that rape victims should, should bear responsibility. That's not what he means, guys. He means that if you're a careless woman or man, then you don't deserve it to happen to you, but you care you have a little bit of responsibility to not go into these dangerous areas. Here's a tip guys, don't do stupid things with stupid people at stupid times at in stupid places. That's a tip right there guys, you know what I mean? That's a safety tip for everyone. Romania, which was raided earlier this year as part of the rape and human trafficking investigation that led to his arrest in 2022. Is that true that you sequestered an American girl? It's not even pretty. It's girls average. <laughs> I don't have time for this bullshit. What about the rape accusation? That's not true at all. We've yet to find out though, guys. If he gets convicted of human trafficking and, I don't know, raping a bunch of people, then absolutely, then I'll definitely go back on it. But up to that point, guys, it's like trial by media. You know, it's like, let's just presume this guy is, you know, presume this guy is, is guilty until proven innocent. You know, it's, it's completely ridiculous, guys. It should be the other way around. Always innocent until proven guilty, right? Hello, is this Andrew Tate's house? I'm Matt. Okay. Hey, hey, hello. Just a second to have a confirmation from Mr. Tate. Okay, cool. Yeah, you just let me know when, when we're allowed. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, hello. Good to see you. This place is giant. Yeah, I can give you a quick tour. I can't show okay. you a lot of it. A lot of it's like off limits, but I can show you okay. some of it. Gee, Gee off, come bite then. Show them how scary you are. Is this the normal level of security you have for your house every day, or is this just for us? This or? is the normal level of security I have in my house every day. I am prepared for all eventualities. It's better to be paranoid. I kind of like cars. I can tell, yeah. This door leads to, I can't take you in there. That's classified. Up on there, I can't take you in there either. It's classified. You do, you do know if you go to any off-limit areas, like security, you're going to intercept. So every yeah. my point classified, I'm basically saying don't make them put a gun in your face. Got it. TV, which I never watch. World title belts. I was four-time kickboxing world champion. And what's this painting over here? That's my brother. Who else lives here? Is it just you? No, I live here. It kind of reminds me of like Scarface or something, guys. You know, the more I watch more of Tate, I'm like, this guy kind of reminds me of like Dan Bilzerian, Scarface type guy, like mafia boss type thing. My brother. I think you get the best version of yourself if you live with other competitive men. I, I don't have loser friends. I like sitting down with people and discussing how we can make money from the conflict in Ukraine. That's what I enjoy. I don't want to talk about TV. Interesting. Okay, cool. They're kind of trying to like paint this narrative like it's bad. Guys, it's much better to be talking about money with your friends than it is talking shit about other people with your friends. You know, if you're talking about other people with your friends, you're just a bitch, man. If you see another person and you start talking shit, you are a bitch, man. You know, really try and stop doing that, you know? Hi, by the way. Sorry to interrupt. I'm Matt. Georgia. Georgia, good to meet you. What are you up to, Georgia? Working. 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 Okay. This is, uh... The woman I'm trying to speak to, Work. Georgiana Nalko, would also later be arrested, accused of assisting Tate in a human trafficking operation. What? Something she denies fully. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hi. Hey. This is how, that's his um that's his filmer. I can't remember. Oh Luke, that's his filmer, Luke, right? How are you? What are these guys up to? Conquering the world, my friend. Through what means? I run Hustlers University, which is now currently the biggest online educational platform in the world. We they make like nine million euro a month, man. That's crazy, bro. I will one day do a subscription based service for sure. Like my Patreon, guys. Go check out my Patreon. I have like loads of perks, like censored videos and all that kind of stuff. So Patreon's the place to be. Grown extremely fast. I have 110,000 students inside of a year. Hustlers University. Hustlers University. Hustlers University. Is that guy Irish? For 49. He's like Hustlers University. And Hustlers University. Hustlers University. Hustlers University. Hustlers University. <laughs> For $49 a month, Andrew Tate's online Hustlers University <laughs> promises to teach his millions Bro, of followers. how do people not laugh at this, man? People just take life so serious. I'm like, if you guys are that obsessed about Andrew Tate, man, you guys need to get a job or something, bro. Yeah, I mean, or do some online content, bro. Do something. Oh my God, man. This is just, this is kind of weak, man. This Matt C Shia guy just seems like, oh my God, just right off the rip. He just seems like a little fucking little bitch or something. I don't know. Followers, the secrets of modern wealth creation, from crypto trading to drop shipping. No big deal, just the biggest online school in history. Is this a sharp sword or is it kind of a decorative sword? I did a Tate speech about why I have this sword. 
speech. A Tate speech is like my YouTube channel, Tate speech. Yeah, yeah. And I talked about how the number one problem with the world is that not enough men walk around their houses with swords. Mm -hmm. that, that's up there for sure. Because if more men walked around their houses with swords, so many of the world's issues could be fixed. But you have to extrapolate it. Okay. For example, so the woman panics, she sees something on TV, the man comes home, she's like, oh, you go, we gotta start wearing a mask, da, da, da. If the man walked around with a sword, and she's like, put a mask on, he'd be like, I'm brave, I don't need a mask. I'm a commander, fuck you. It's just a symbol of empowerment. You got your sword, your wife starts talking, you're like, shut up, I decide what I do. <laughs> be quiet, cook. Andrew's unashamed. Oh, they're, they're doing good to make him look bad, guys. They're really doing good to make him look bad. Like, why don't they ever talk about, like, his, his motivational and finance stuff? And all the videos that I watch have nothing... I've never even seen any of this content, man. All the videos that I watch about him, like, motivate you to work harder, work out, you know, don't be, you know, feeling sorry for yourself. Like, all these, like, really helpful things. Like, a lot of different other people that I watch, you know, motivational people... But this is just looks, this is making him look awful, you know? Named misogynistic and violent views <sighs> so far seem to match his YouTube persona. Oh my god. But to find out how he's translated those into viral fame, I accept an invite onto the Tate Brothers podcast, Emergency Meeting, which is also a chance to get acquainted with his brother Tristan. <laughs> Welcome to Emergency Meeting episode 13. We have a special guest, Matt <laughs> Shea who is uh, internationally renowned and respected. He's a folk singer and he's gonna sing us a song. Andrew's invited his mate on our show uh, without my consent. I'm just gonna have to bite my tongue and listen to you guys talk most of this emergency meeting. Otherwise I'm gonna walk off. Matt, so, Matt can you introduce yourself? Tell them about your singing career. Tell them where you're from, etc. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually not a folk singer at all in what? the slightest. No, sorry. What? I'm... Are you calling my brother Bro, a lot? he's so scared because he knows he's coming here to paint a bad narrative about these guys. like. If this guy is this scared being in your company, you know that he's like some sort of, you know, underlying meaning or, you know, you know, deceptive activity in, in, in play, right? Liar. You lied to case, me. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen the clown that hides from gay people? And... <laughs> Have you seen No, him? I haven't seen you the clown that hides the gay So him. you've never seen him? No. Strange. Is he here somewhere? Strange. Well, yeah, he's right here. I see him. I see him. All right, let's be nice to our vice friend. So let me be nice to him before he does a hit piece. He's, this is definitely a hit piece. I've warned my brother that this is a setup, and this is what everyone- I don't- is. They're actually right, guys. Isn't that funny how the Tates are actually right about this? This is a setup. This was the biggest setup ever. Care! I'm uninterested. I've clearly conquered the internet. I'm clearly unstoppable. I'm like the Borg. You've invited the liberal news media to come- They can all life. come. Just because I'm wearing a gun, I'm violent. Is that how it is? Just because I got knives all over the table and I'm a kickboxing world champion, I'm violent. If you are wearing a gun and you have knives, that does make you a little bit violent. It makes, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It makes me security aware. I don't want to song. I haven't Sing said like you promised. It's you a set up. I won't kick Vice out of my house. I think. A few more minutes or no, are we done with no, it? No, no, you can sing now or you're off the pot. During an ad break, Andrew breaks character. I'm 30 second break. Check the shit. Another five minutes and we'll get you out of here. You can talk, you can talk shit back. You can annoy us if you want. Don't worry, no, I know. I'm just not very good at it. I'm not very good at talking shit. <laughs> Dude, he's actually like friendly. He's like kind of put on like a bit of a character, right? Like that's the whole, it's the whole thing, right? We've had a long career. We have to do um, our normal broadcast. Okay. Kick him off the pod. Cool, man. Have fun, guys. Yeah. Cool. Bro, this is gonna be the worst documentary about us. What are they gonna? Say? What are they gonna say? I don't know. He has lots of cars and money. All the women love him. He's sexist. <laughs> oh no! Please don't put that on the internet. <laughs> Who cares? Right? Whatever. Within minutes of being on their show, the Tate content machine snaps into action. Oh yeah. Wow. Already. You promised to sing to me. If you think I won't kick Vice out of my house. You can sing now or you're off the phone. Tate Brothers embarrass Vice Reporter. Actually, yeah, I take that back. I want to make sure that my army is fighting, you know, ethically and following the objective. 18,000 likes, 246 comments, 66 reshares. Oh, I accidentally liked it. If you had to go to war, did you call your friends? Let's see what people are saying. Tate win, as always. I'm impressed how easily he runs over weak men's arguments. It isn't Tate posting all these videos. So who are all these people? Tate Brothers Embarrassed Vice Reporter was posted by a fan account that has 58,000 followers and 3.9 million likes, and is just posting loads of videos every single day. Right in the description of his account says, looking to level up your life, start here. 
It's a sign-up link to the Hustlers University. Another account. And again, a link to the Hustlers. What's he trying to do here? He's just showing good advertising, good marketing, and how to make loads of money. I don't really understand what, what he's trying to show here. That he's like a bad person for clickbaiting or something. I don't really know. University. He's got a clever formula here. It well, I mean... In terms of the TikTok way that he does it, yes, it's like revolutionary. Nobody really knows how he does that. But in terms of, you know, posting your link on Instagram and TikTok and stuff to your YouTube channel, something that's not really that revolutionary, right? Really. Turns out a big part of Hustlers University is an affiliate marketing scheme where boys as young as 13 share controversial videos of Andrew with links to the Hustlers University underneath. If someone signs up through your link, you get 48% of their subscription fee. Whoa. By financially incentivizing 110,000 students to share his content online, Andrew has essentially built an army to make him rich and famous in a very short space of time. And he's tactically avoiding the impact of social media bans because it isn't Andrew himself posting, it's his legion of fans. All I'm doing is saying that every, the shit that everyone thinks is isn't allowed to say. So that's the reason I'm all big on the internet. I'm starting to wonder whether he's just a living meme. You're a loser because your mentality is loserish. Some kind of viral marketing campaign aimed at young men. Dude, why does everything sound so sinister like we're in some sort of horror movie? It's like not that bad. Like everyone needs to just relax about Tate, guys. This is just not that big of a deal. Now, obviously, if he gets convicted of like these serious offenses, then it will be. But he hasn't even been like charged with anything yet. I don't really understand, you know? you never had the life I had, ever or if he really believes what he says. All I am offering is the truth. Neo in the Matrix. Andrew first appeared on our screens as a reality TV star. I've never been in this situation in my life so far in my 21 years where I really want something and didn't get it. He had found an arena where controversial personalities thrive. I have to manipulate a lot of people to win. But something happened when Andrew was on Big Brother one of the biggest reality TV shows of all time. This is Big Brother. Due to events in the outside world, Andrew has had to leave the Big Brother house. He was reportedly removed from the program when a video surfaced of him slapping his ex-girlfriend and then beating her with a belt. Hey, you stupid bitch. I didn't say the word listen. Did I say listen? Did I say listen? No. Did I say it? Public outrage simmered down after Andrew released a video of his ex, claiming it was all part of a so-called kinky game. It was just pure game, it's just what we used to do. But what the public- I mean, yeah, it doesn't look like she has a gun to her head saying that, guys, but I don't know, I don't really comment on that. Maybe some people are into that kind of shit. I'm not really into all that shit, but I think he said on when he was on Big Brother, he said that he was gonna defend himself, basically, and then the producers were like, no, you can't because you're like really good fighter or whatever. And then they were like, whatever, they just like kicked him off, right? What he didn't know, and what we can now reveal, is that around the time that Andrew was playing Truth or Dare in the Big Brother pool, the UK police had informed the production company that he was under investigation for two incidents involving other women. One of rape, and a further of physical assault. In May 2020- So those two women that came out recently, like two days ago, because I'm filming this on the 20th of February, those two women, it came out and they were actually colluding to try and get him um, taken down basically from the internet guys. And all the files are up on the internet. You guys can just Google the two women that accused him of stuff and it's all, you know, getting put to the jury now. So something like that. So 21, Tate made reference to his arrest in an appearance on the Fresh and Fit podcast. I was like, who are you? And they're like, you're under arrest for a suspicion of assault of this dumb hoe. And I'm like, I was like wait, this is dumb hoe? <laughs> they didn't, but I'm going to protect her anonymity an 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 because I'm a nice guy. Dumb hoe. During the same period, the Tate brothers were recruiting women for a webcam sex business and creating the first of their many online courses, teaching other men how to do the same. I am her everything. So none of the stuff that he did was illegal, guys, but a lot of it's unethical because it's basically, and I don't actually agree with what he did. I listened to an interview before. He basically got these women to fall in love with men and then they would pay them just like outrageous amounts of money. And then they wouldn't even meet them. They'd kind of like fuck over the guys in, in, a, in, a, in a way. And it was brutal, man. Now, it's unethical, not illegal, but 
really bad, really bad karma has come from that, guys. Really bad karma would come from anything like that. Now, like I said, it's not legal, so, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't matter if I fuck someone else, because I'm her everything. She has nowhere else to go. Pimping it was called the Tate degree. PhD, or PhD. pimping up. <laughs> Gosh, bro, this, how can people not find this hilarious, bro? I don't understand. Hose degree. She was a fucking hoe, and I spotted it instantly because she didn't humble herself when she was supposed to. And I'm glad I didn't waste any more time on her because she's never going to be doing like my other girls do, living in my house, letting me fuck other women, remaining loyal, and fucking bringing me coffees and doing as I say. He and kind of just sounds like a rapper, guys. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to like rap music and stuff. Like, I'm not talking about British rap. That's a bit kind of PG, but like... American rap music like money bag yo little baby you know da baby they speak way worse than this guy speaking and none of those have got cancelled apart from da baby he's got cancelled before Drew has closed down the pimping hose degree <laughs> to focus on the hustlers university Luke your screen's compromised yeah so yeah. keep it super fucking vanilla Did you at one point say that the girls who started as your girlfriends and then work for the webcam industry, 100% of the profit goes to you? I think in a lot of households in the world today, the man is in charge of the investments. I think that's not an uncommon thing. Tell me a view I have that you think is genuinely insulting or destructive to society. I'd like to hear it. You prefer younger women who are 18 or 19 because you can leave an imprint on them? No, when I say leave an imprint, I mean that. It's, uh, you, I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that like if I get her, I can brainwash her. I'm not trying to say that. If you meet a girl who's 22 and you're her second boyfriend, she's probably like a nicer person, less jaded, less upset, less suspicious. So you like to be in a position of power. It's not being in a position of power. It's about, I enjoy to show her amazing things. You're trying to attach things to the situation which, are, which aren't true. Five years ago, you said rape is a terrible thing, but if you put yourself in a position to be raped, then you should bear some responsibility for that. Okay, so first we agree that rape is a terrible thing. Point I'm trying to make is the best way to prevent yourself from being raped is to have a degree of personal responsibility. Like, like I said, guys, at the beginning, like, just don't go to dangerous areas. Don't get really drunk and hang out with people. Like, I just don't even get drunk anymore, guys. Honestly, for the past like three years, I don't really, I, you know, my whole life I never really got hammered drunk. Maybe like, maybe like less than ten times in my life I got absolutely hammered. So, you know, I'm 27 now, or maybe less than even five times I've got absolutely hammered because I don't like that feeling of not being in control. You know. When, you know, a lot of the times bad things happen when you're drunk, when you're in dangerous areas with dangerous people doing dangerous things. You know, it's really, you know, so keep safe, you know. And not put yourself in positions to be raped, as opposed to standing there saying that rape shouldn't happen because, or men raise our boys better. You know what else shouldn't happen? Robbery. I want the freedom to walk down the road with a million dollars in cash. Is it fair to compare the desire to walk around with a million pounds in cash to someone wanting to just walk around their own city at night? Well, fee well, I wouldn't like, walk around anywhere at night, guys, personally. You know, like I said, I'm 6'3", 250 pounds nearly. I wouldn't walk around the streets on my own, guys. Like, honestly. Like, I mean, in, in the city I live in, yeah, it's fine. And I'm not personally scared like that as much as women. I understand what he means by that. But... If you're in a rough part of Dublin or a rough part of Europe or a rough part of America and you're walking on the street on your own, you're kind of an idiot, guys. You know, you're, you're an idiot, man. This Matt Shea guy, I don't know where he's been living, but I worked security for seven years, guys, and I wouldn't personally do a lot of that stuff because bad shit happens, you know what I mean? I've seen a lot of people get messed up, a lot of people. Female beauty is extremely valuable. Of course, female beauty is extremely valuable in the eyes of men who seek to exploit it. I don't give a shit about having sex with beautiful women. I fuck them so they listen to me. So I can get what I actually want, which is not them. It's a means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. Have you heard the term? <laughs> they are making this guy out to be bad, man. Now, obviously, that one was definitely bad, for sure, right? But... I mean, I think he went when he, dude. I feel like the way Tate explains stuff sometimes comes off as like really bad. He's like basically trying to say that like, you know, I'm not defending him here, guys. But he's basically trying to say that he wants to like use him for a business or something. I think that a lot of Americans, uh, he is American, right? That just money mad, right? They'll just do anything for money. It's kind of insane, honestly. Lover boy before, the lover boy method. Yeah romantically involving yourself with a woman and then making money off of her in some sort of sex adjacent industry. Firstly, I would call the webcam industry far closer to psychology than sex. 
the webcam industry has prevented more male suicide than any group of therapists, any action group, any charity ever would, right? Is that true? How can you measure that? Well, I, it's not about measuring, it's about my personal experience. One of the concerns that people have about that okay, no, firstly, method people, is that let me, let me correct you, because I'm a professional. Is that it's similar to, or people might consider that a form of grooming. Okay, so I'm a professional, so I have to conf, conf, I have to change what you just said. I have to at least, con, I have to at least challenge you on it. Nobody's concerned about anything that happened 10 years ago when a bunch of girls got rich. There's not a single female complaining. Do you think there's not a single no, no, female no. complaining? Have you seen one? Tell me. Andrew says no woman has complained about him personally. He won't let us speak to the women who work for him. So for now, it's difficult to verify this claim. But I have spoken to many women who complain about the effect Andrew's rhetoric is having on their lives. So we're 15 minutes in. There's been nothing positive so far. Dude, don't let Vice do a documentary about you. My God, that's railroad you. To protect them from harassment, I've agreed not to name them. What? But this is this is just ridiculous, guys. What do you mean to protect them from harassment? This is just ridiculous. Just she could just paid an actor to do this, guys. Do people not see? Are people actually so stupid? And like I said again, guys, I'm not defending Tay. He can defend himself, but I don't believe any of this, guys. Like, you gotta be, and, and this is the issue people nowadays, guys, I, I, I straight up say this, people just believe anything nowadays. Oh my god, it's, it's just like, it's almost mind-blowing. Oh, we're just gonna ring this random girl and say, yeah, protect your identity. So yeah, what did, the, what, what did he do? Yeah, tell, tell us what she did. And then just, she said, just rattles off some bullshit because they paid her loads of money. I mean, come on, bro. What, what even, this isn't even journalism. This is just ridiculous. Bro, they're railroading tape, and I'm honestly like, like I said, they can, he can protect himself, defend himself, but this is people. This is just such a clown world we're living in right now, guys. This is ridiculous. My ex-boyfriend was radicalized by Andrew Tate to the point of threatening to release revenge porn unless I took back what I said and on social media against his sexist, you know, misogynistic views. It's like a virus, the things that he's spreading. The scariest thing is, I have no idea if the next guy I meet could be an Andrew Tate man. <laughs> this sounds like she's reading it off a script. Guys, come on, bro. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not legitimate. If it is legitimate, he has to go to jail, guys. You know what I mean? But th this does not sound like... I mean, come on. The next guy that I meet could be an Andrew Tate fan. Bro, let me tell you something, guys. Um, most guys that I know that love Andrew Tate get a lot of women. And women love them, so I don't know... Do people think that listening to this guy or something is going to turn women off them? Women don't care about that shit, guys. Like, honestly, they don't care who you like on the internet or I don't know who you follow for inspiration. I, what? I just, bro, this is just, oh, man, I can't even watch the rest of this. Man. We got another 30 minutes to go, bro. I can't watch this shit. As a teacher, it's definitely worrisome. There are boys who look up to him, especially those that may be vulnerable and they're sort of going to go into the real world carrying those violent views with them. I'm 14. The boys at school my age think that it's okay to say horrible things like women are men's property and they get to do what they want with them. It makes me really disappointed in my generation. Andrew's views represent a new era in modern misogyny. Start talking to some bitches and say, me and my man are fucking. Where you can now not only talk openly about subjugating and objectifying women, Dude, but doing so- You know what's funny? I wish they'd do a hit piece on like Dan Bilzerian or something. I'm sure he's way worse than Tate. You know, Tate is more of a money-making kind of mad kind of guy. In terms of like getting loads of women, I'm sure Dan Bilzerian gets 10 times the amount of women that Andrew Tate does, right? But he's just not very open about it. I bet if Dan Bilzerian, you know, pushed out his life more, it would be like way worse, man. Dan Bilzerian, guys, come on. That guy. So actually garners millions of committed fans. They don't believe the level that you can operate at when you're actually a G. The most hardcore of them have traveled here to Romania to join the War Room. The War Room is a fraternity. We're a brotherhood which is designed to inspire the best from our brothers. They have to have the mentality and the pedigree to survive. There's tests, and if you do them, you can stay inside. You Andrew stay. At the top of Andrew's fraternity is a small group of wealthy and powerful men. Sounds like a bit of a cult, I'm not gonna lie. Men who all stand to gain significantly from the expansion of his empire. This inner circle is not happy that I'm here. After our testy exchange this morning, Andrew invites me to watch him train. Have you ever boxed before? No. But it turns out he's planning on teaching me a lesson. Who's got spare glass? 
go. I appear to have unintentionally walked into a situation where Andrew Tate is going to train me how to box. Punch me! Punch me. Oh, 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 dude. oh, look, you're bleeding already. It's only round one. We've only warmed up. Keep going, bro. We've got ten more rounds. No fucking way. Man. No, 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 no. I meet and get punched in the face by the inner circle of the war room. In the world Andrew is creating, not only are women to be subjugated, <laughs> sorry, that almost felt like I got knocked out, but men defined by their capacity Dude, to- he's a pretty tough son of a bitch though, man. If he's actually doing this, like, even the training, you know, I've done a lot of uh, judo and they can really hurt you, man. Like, you know what I mean? They, like, make you choke out and everything. So he's pretty badass to do this, you know, fair play to the guy, Matt Shia, for doing this. Inflict violence. <laughs> okay, okay, tap out. You stopped, you were like, all right, yeah. pause, time out. Like if that were having a street fight, would someone stop? No, no, so that's your reaction, I need to fight back. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, right. you. Yeah. The War Room is a network where you have 10 meetings a year. The next one's gonna be in the mountains of Transylvania. You could do it, but I don't know, my friend, if you're prepared. We've left Bucharest and we're driving into the Carpathian Mountains. This looks exactly like Czech Republic and Slovakia. And this to meet Andrew and his inner circle for the war room, which is gonna involve something called the test. I've made it into Andrew Tate's war room, where 100 of his biggest fans have flown in from all across the world, each paying $5,000 to have their manhood tested by the one they refer to as Commander. Commander. None of us know what he has in store. I welcome you all to the test. There is a cage fighting event, and every single one of you has been paired against a professional fighter. You will fight in the cage on national television, and it's a real fight. There are two paths you can go down. You can agree to fight, or you can decide that it's not for you. You have one hour to think and make a decision. That's gonna be a hard no from me. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a yes, just to learn a little bit more of what happens, and then definitely pull out at some point. Does anyone have any questions to ask me? There's no training before this fight. If you've been walking through life too lazy to fucking train, is that your problem or my problem? This is really good, guys. A lot of special forces do this. I, I love, like the US military and I always watch the military stuff in America. They do a lot of the special forces training where they just have regular guys that maybe have like great basic, you know, jujitsu or boxing or judo, or whatever. I have basic judo guys, nothing really too special. But you know, if I was to do this guys, I'd get my ass whooped. But it's not about getting your ass kicked guys, it's about getting into a fight and you know, not knowing the outcome. Whether you win or lose guys, at least you've challenged yourself, right? It's about, you know, a mentality thing. It's a, it's a, it's a mental thing, not a physical thing, right? I couldn't help overhearing some disagreement within the war room. Did you all start you wink wink? The hell are you doing? What's what's this? It's gonna be fine, bro. We have an ambulance, we have medics. No one gonna no get fucking knocked out. Don't worry about it. At the center of it all was Andrew's right hand man, Iggy Samowise. Who the hell is this guy? Here I will share with you my secrets. He's the self-proclaimed greatest hypnotist in the world. You will learn the power of hypnosis. Cool. And seem to have an agenda that expanded beyond the war room itself into something larger and darker. Your sons will marry their daughters. Your daughters will marry their sons. You will create legacies. Enjoying those juicy steaks, that finer scotch, those smoother cigars. He refused to speak to us but it's clear that he has a big role to play in whatever the War Room's real agenda is. What? This is the War Room of Andrew Tate. That's great, so it's some sort of hypnosis type thing? I never knew about this, guys. Maybe he's just trying to like make people more masculine or something like that. Something like that, so I'm guessing that's what it is, right? Welcome to the test. Now is decision time. You are getting in the cage to fight a professional fighter who is trained to hurt you. Anyone who is fighting, Please stand up. Anyone who is not fighting. I mean, this is just like not that serious because if you do any sort of sparring, I mean, I was fighting when I was like 90 kilos. I remember I was like 18 to, or I, I did judo for like three years. So I was 16 to about 19. You know, I was fighting professional people. I would sign up for contests all the time. I get my ass whooped. I get knocked out sometimes like twice, just like hit my head off or three times actually hit my head off the mat and stuff like that. Choked out, 
it's not that big of a deal to go into a professional fight, guys. I know a lot of people think, oh, but it's controlled, right? Like, you know, in the military and stuff, it's all controlled, right? You're not going to die. Hopefully not. You know what I mean? You can die always, but, you know what I mean? That's just like anything, right? You can stay seated, and we will begin the other program. <laughs> just like that, a third of the room decides to get beaten up for Andrew Tate. What happens to the people who said no? They're doing something slightly different, describing the reasons they didn't do it how that affects their life as a whole, whether they're gonna make any changes in the future to be more ready for opportunities. That's where honor comes from, right? From victory. One of the men who said no agrees to speak to us as long as we hide his face. Why did you say no? I have been in the ring before, but just sparring. But I was like, fuck, professionals and Russians, like, they, they, they guys are serious. I was just too scared. So then afterwards, I felt bad about myself and I was angry at myself. Because he came here to be tested. Andrew Tate has obviously said a lot of kind of controversial things online. Yeah. What do you think about that? A lot of things are very controversial. But I think the bottom of his message is a very, very positive one. Because if I'm not tough on myself, nobody else will be. Nobody really cares about me if I don't care about me, right? That's, That's what I true. learned from Andrew Tate. People That's decided true. this morning... Like, it's basically trying, just trying to build people to be more masculine, right? It's not that... I don't know, people think he's some sort of like... He's trying to make him out to be some sort of like sorcerer, or some sort of higher power. Oh, he's like manipulating people. He's basically just trying to make people more masculine or some, some shit like that, guys, right? It's not that complex, right? Morning, and people who decided at a later date here. We have a chaperone following us. We've been told that we're not allowed to talk to anyone. <laughs> what about in passing, asking people like, what single question? Let me run this by tape before we film. No other comment. Okay, all right. Would so, you be up for that? Yeah. Yeah? Our chaperone vets who we speak to and tries to heavily control our questions. What do you Show do? Show that you're not okay. some sort of right-wing extremist for this. Why did you join the war? Room? I don't want to be fucking stagnant. I need to grow. It's just a fundamental shift in my mindset. Yeah, it's a what mindset. I think could be bad is always good. For the war room, I used to think, why is this happening to me now? What is this trying to like teach me? About Andrew Tate specifically and the things he says online, the yeah. things that get him negative publicity, yeah. what do you think about those things? I think he's speaking the truth. Really? Yeah. Interviewing under the chaperone's supervision is proving restrictive. Yeah? No, no fucking, no alpha craziness. He's a bit of a, he's an animal, this one. So, <laughs> you know, even in Eastern Europe, man, like, I'm half Eastern European, genetically, they're afraid of Russians, guys, so I'm not mad at the people being afraid of Russians. You know, Russians are tough sons of bitches, man. So we can't speak to anyone? Okay. And he's Who is this mysterious down. chaperone anyway? Hey, man. Hey, man, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Good, man. Um, I was wondering if we could have a little chat. Yeah, sounds yeah? good. Yeah? Brought over from Dubai. Like Hello. most war room leaders, he has a sports car. <laughs> do you want to do the interview in here? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not, man. And like most people with a sports car, <laughs> He's keen to show it off. So, what do they call you? In these circles, uh, sartorial or the sartorial shooter. I'm one of the guys who manages uh, organizational risk and security for the war room. So anyone with any criminal activity, maybe they are showing signs of being racist or sexist or any of these sorts of things, they're out straight away. We, we will not tolerate that. And so how do you reconcile that with some of the things that Andrew, for example, says online? Any claims of misogyny or the fact that he's you know, spreading hateful words, that's not the reality of who he is and that's not what the war room stands for and that's not what he stands for. There are many clips of him out there saying, I'm not a misogynist, I provide for my women, I would stand up for my women in a violent situation. What do you think his detractors would say about, for example, what you just said, the phrase, my women? Do you think that they would consider that to be misogynist? The phrase, my woman, for me, ties into the very traditional values that we have. Andrew's well known for talking a lot about his multiple girlfriends. How does that tie into this idea of a traditional relationship? Mm -hmm. Men at certain levels can provide for multiple women. And even we can go back a uh, hundred years ago, kings, you know, wealthy men, they would support multiple families. How is that a bad thing? It's only very recently that men and women have been competing in pretty much in, in masculine realms, in work, in career, not that long ago. And, and indeed, in many cultures around the world, women still have the traditional gender norms. And we believe in the war room, that's what leads to happiness. Rather than a career or like you have, mm -hmm. you know, your own agency in the world to pursue your own goals. The women who I know who are most fulfilled in life are not trying to do the things that traditionally men used to do. 
what about a situation where this has just popped into my head where I want my girlfriend who I love mm -hmm. to be a kept woman, mm -hmm. but she doesn't, she wants to pursue a career or something like that. Then find a different woman. Find Very simple. Woman. The core belief driving the war room and what men here are seeking is a misogynist fantasy of a time when they were kings and women were subjugated. It's at the heart of what Andrew Tate is selling. Just look at the tweets of Iggy Semmelweis, his second in command. My webcam girl is home 100% of the time, has no time nor interest in going out. She sleeps, cooks, cleans, does her shows, gives me all the money, gets railed by me and our girlfriends, then smiles, thanks me, and goes and does it again tomorrow. Welcome to the war room. I think what they're trying to do is sell this like image that you're gonna get loads of women or something if you do this program, right? But it's not really guaranteed if you do this program, right? That's just what I'm getting from it. You know, I try and look at everything like from a better stance. I don't think it's like that sinister as they're trying to make it out to be like, oh, I get with loads of women and she's like subservient and all this kind of thing. I think it's more of a, let me think. I think it's more of like a get loads of women type thing. You know, if, you, if you're not able to get, you know, get women as a man or something like that. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, guys, I think that's what it is. I'm not sure he's trying to make women out to be slaves or anything like that. I'm not really sure it's that sinister, like Jesus. Now, it's quite possible this next story has passed some of you by, but you would be in a minority. As the war remembers and I are bust to the fight location, the world begins to talk about Andrew Tate with a new intensity. He is a 35-year-old influencer who's been accused of spreading rape Openly culture. Openly condones and celebrates violence against women. Hitting women. Kids are acting like the things that he's saying is like revolutionary. 11-year-old boys, they love Please Andrew Tate. Please stop looking up to Andrew Tate. He is a bad guy. With the PR crisis going on, Andrew's team are eager for some good press. So they send an extra-friendly chaperone to sell me on the benefits of the war room experience. I'm Alpha Wolf. Okay. My role is to be Alpha Wolf. Okay, fair enough. Life is all about how you deal with the pain and how you move forward. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn a lot about yourself as a man. So take it, make the best out of it, mm -hmm. and grow as a man and be tough. You know, David Goggins was recently in Dublin, guys, and I listened to a thing on TikTok, I believe. And he basically explained how, like, there's certain people that like Andrew Tate's message, which is a bit more rough around the edges. People, certain people that like Oprah Winfrey's message, which is a very piece, PG, a very kind of like, you know, maybe it's very good you know how to be kind how to be tough <clears throat> but very kind of pg like i said and then you have people like david goggins message which is very like different than andrew tate's message but it's the same message guys how to be more masculine how to be mentally tough right i think that's what we should really be taking away from this not trying to railroad freaking tate mate. come on all of the men in this room seem to be taking this incredibly seriously what's your like goal for the fire of course i'm gonna try to win I see a lot of contenders right there who had the guts to come right here in a cage. If any one of them win one fight, he's gonna win all their money, all their girls. This is the culmination of Andrew Tate's pressure cooker of male insecurity. You're a fucking bro. You are poor. I'm the only guy on this fucking pl I am poor. <laughs> Not for long though, Tate. I'm trying to get there, bro, with this YouTube channel. Come on, bro. Platform flying around on private jets with 27 cars living this lifestyle. Most of you are not too stupid to become rich. Are you ready? Thank you, Tate. Round one. But while they come forward to gratefully take the beatings they've paid thousands of dollars for, you're here to lose a little bit of blood. Andrew Tate's future on social media is hanging in the balance. And the public backlash is spreading. I'm desperate to ask him about all of this, but first I have to get through this ridiculous situation that I've found myself in. All right, let's go. Give it up for Matt Shepard. Did I say it right? Shepard. Very excited for him. Now, Matt has passed the test. I know he's going to lose, but wow, he's actually in there. Whatever's going on behind the scenes, watching me get chased around puts a smile on Andrew's face. Takes a strip to the ground. And there's gonna be a ground and pound finish. Oh, that is it! The referee calls him. Oh, that's a good decision. He was unable to defend himself. That was a good decision. 
Unable to defend himself. I so. <laughs> I almost punched him out myself. No, no dude, fair play to him. That's pretty badass to get in there. He's badass. officially from the Ogre. I can't believe he actually got in there. Those who went all in on their fight came out badly. One man was knocked out and taken away on a stretcher. The inner circle had put these men through collective hardship and recreated them in Andrew Tate's image. Fighters. Come here guys, come up to the front. He broke his hand on your head. And you're fine. So you win. But they had also joined a movement that was European. I think actually a lot of what I see in Tate is because he's obviously living in Romania. A lot of the things I see growing up, just like I used to, you know, go go there for holidays and stuff to like Slovakia and Prague and stuff like that, guys, and Czech Republic. This is very even the way he speaks is so Eastern European, almost Russian like, you know. I know a lot of people watching this aren't from there or whatever, but from what I see, it's very like Eastern European Russian like the way he speaks, you know. It kind of reminds me how my uncle speaks, like, in, in Slovakia. It's really funny, actually. This is hilarious. Widely accused of normalizing sexism. Why is he talking about sexism again? They're, they're doing, like, fighting and stuff. What? I don't understand this propaganda. Bro. While the men who chose to fight are paraded in front of the crowd, Andrew's team shame those who refused. The shame hold. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. So anyone who fought, you can put your hand up. How the experience... Guys, you know... You, you, either you die a thousand times a coward or you die once as a man, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how it goes, man. You know, I would have just fought just on principle of shit, guys. You know what I'm saying? Personally, like, if I get my ass whooped, this is like whatever type thing, you know? But the, the, the shame that you get from getting punked, I know everyone's got punked sometime in their life, that'll live with you for like 10 years, guys. You know what I'm saying? So, don't get punked. experience was, how it's gonna change your life, and if you have anything to say to the people who didn't fight. I don't think I have any word of advice for the people that didn't do it except that he should have probably. Immediately he went to check on me. I'm thinking I want to go train because I feel like that would do it, right? So yeah. that's what I want to do. Right now I have new mountains to climb and I'd love to get back here a year from now and go to the gym of the guy who beat the shit out of me. Didn't it feel like a movie the last few days? I feel like that's a great metaphor for life. Uh, you know, Is that Joe Frazier? That sounds like Joe Frazier guy. He kind of looks like the same physique as well. Hmm. We shouldn't be slaves, we shouldn't be working 9 to 5 jobs, we should actually make our lives into, I guess, a movie. You know like the, you know, like the Gymshark athlete, the, the athlete that's from England, Joe Frazier? Let's, let's hear that again, I think that kind of sounds like him, huh? Now, and go to the gym of the guy who beat the shit out of me. Didn't it feel like a movie the last few days? I feel like that's a great metaphor for that life. That is Joe Frazier. Did he do a video on that, guys? I bet he did a video on that. That's hilarious, man. Joe Frazier, that, 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 even the haircut and everything. Maybe it's not, guys, but it looks exactly like Joe, Joe Frazier. You know that he's like sponsored by Gymshark. Guys, that, he's exact same physique, exact same haircut as well. I think I just cracked the code. Joe Frazier, let's say Joe Frazier, uh, Tate. I think, did he say, did he ever do a video on the Tate thing? Did he ever do a video on the Tate thing, guys? Some of his loyal subscribers would know Joe Fraser Tate. He's like that guy that blew up on Joe Fraser speaks on men fitness scams, YouTube money, and mental health. No, I don't think he did speak on it. That is definitely him, guys. That is definitely him. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be slaves. We shouldn't be working nine to five jobs. We should actually make our lives into, I guess, a movie. I want to be known as one of the best fathers in the war room. I can't look at my sons and tell them to suck it up, Buttercup, if I don't say yes to this. Yeah, makes sense. Whether or not they fought, all the men here paid $5,000 to the only real winner in this performance, Andrew Tate. For the people who want to stay and relax, there's some chicks, don't know where they're from. Yeah, let's have fun, I hope you all enjoyed it. We're told not to film the celebrations that conclude the evening, and it's not clear exactly what goes on. But once outside the lobby, we could clearly see a room containing naked women being photographed. What? What the hell? With Andrew's on? team increasingly conscious of negative publicity, tonight could be the last chance to interview him. 
Do you consider the possibility that some of the things that you've said, which have been viewed 11 billion times, yeah. may lead to an attitude towards women that could be harmful? I accept that across all of that viewership, I have perhaps, possibly, maybe said one thing, or maybe two, that has upset a large range of people. Wouldn't it make sense to just apologize for some of the things you've said, acknowledge that they have caused harm, and say that you won't say those things again? No, and I'll tell you why. I'm not gonna apologize for the edits of other people. I'm not gonna apologize for the misunderstandings of other people. There's a whole bunch of clips people are making which make me look very bad. That's not good for my life. That's not good for business. The clips that portray you in a negative light also help the algorithm to make you become more famous and more viral. I'm not an expert on algorithms for social media platforms. I do not have most of them installed on my phone. I cannot control what a 15-year-old Singaporean decides to do when he chops me up and calls me names. I can't control that, and I wouldn't try to. There has been a lot of bad press about you. That's made some nervousness within members of the war, and why is that? Well, obviously, when people are gonna continue to lie and continue to do very, very shallow, very, very fictitious investigations, people are gonna lose faith in you. The media has lost all credibility because you do not try and portray the truth anymore. One thing that stands in the way of truth, for example, is when we often do documentaries, we have full access to speak to anyone we want. No, but in this documentary, we've been very closely watched yeah. by the Sartorial shooter at Alpha Wolf, m picking who we can speak to, you know, monitoring the interview. Yeah. What is it that you're worried that we're going to find out? This, this question is so low. This, this is low. It's low. We let you in. We tried to take care of you. And I you're sitting here and just attacking us for three I, hours, bro. The world is asking these questions and the viewers will be asking these questions. It's a consistent leading question. They did, they did a three hour interview apparently and they couldn't pick out but three minutes of it because he was such a professional and dodged all the you know stupid questions that he was asking them. Consistent narrative. Where's the question about the good he's doing for men? Well, there's a very clear narrative. I need to leave. Okay. In the days afterwards, Tate is banned from YouTube, TikTok, Facebook and Instagram to the protest of his fans. They have shut us down. This is warfare against the West. For a moment, it seems the deplatforming has worked. But then, he reappears on Instagram with an emoji covering his face. You're lost. You understand you're living inside of a mechanism which is designed to control you. you don't he moves to Dubai, converts to Islam, sets up a new bank entirely owned by him and rebrands the Hustlers University as the real world. In the first month after being deplatformed, he made 11 million dollars and got 250 million views on TikTok alone. Months later, Elon Musk reinstates his Twitter account and he gains 1 million followers in 24 hours. I have no criminal charges. There's no charges at all against me. I have not hurt any women. No women are coming forward saying Andrew hit me. Zero. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of Andrew odd. maintains that he has never abused a woman. But when we get back from Romania, we finally manage to speak to some women from his past. A big thing that upset me a lot was everyone saying it's a character, it's a character, it's a character, when I know it's not. To suddenly see him pop up on TikTok just made me really angry. <laughs> because people don't know what he's done. Amelia began seeing Andrew in 2013. Due to fear of harassment from his fans, she is withholding her real name. I always knew, even from back in the day, there was always things said bad about him. But when I'd seen him again in 2013, I thought, oh, all these rumors about him are going to be false because he's actually been really lovely. The first time I went around his house, because before it was a, like, maybe three, four times, you, we got on dates. We started to make out on the bed. Out of the blue, he literally just stopped what he was doing and just laid back. He said, I'm just contemplating whether I should rape you or not. And I promise you, within an instant, he changed. He just jumped straight on top of me, grabbed my throat, started suffocating me, strangling me. The more I didn't want to, it made him so much more aggressive to the point where he was pinning me down, hurting me. The things he was saying to me, he was like, who do you belong to? Who do you belong to? And the more I couldn't say it, the more he'd hurt me. So I couldn't see an escape. 
then I, at that point, I just gave up. I just gave up. And then when it stopped, he went to the bathroom and acted as if it was normal. So I'm like, maybe I did what, did I want it? Did I not? I definitely said to him, please don't, please don't. And he told me, shut the fuck up. Definitely got strangled. I definitely didn't want it. Did he think I wanted it? When you look back, the psychological warfare you have with yourself is like you couldn't even imagine. You wouldn't know, you wouldn't understand it unless you've been through it. Can't even say the damn words. Have you since come to terms with the notion that that may not have been consensual, that that may have been... I know for a fact it wasn't consensual. But it's hard to use the, the word. Even though I know technically it's true, that did happen, it, it, that is what happened to me, I still don't like vocalizing it. Amelia's method of coping with the alleged rapes was to pretend to herself that it was a normal relationship. The abuse wasn't consensual because... Apparently this came out, I don't know if it's sure, obviously it seems pretty bad. If it's actually true, guys, that's horrendous. Like, that's horrendous. But apparently it came out, there's new text. I should leave in the comments down below that there was new, like, they were trying to collude, these two women were trying to collude together to try and get him sued. They actually came out in court or something like that. I have to Google that properly, guys. Because he knew I didn't want it, which she confirms in multiple voice messages and texts to me. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't fucking pass out. In all the women I've ever slept with, not a single one has ever bitched or complained like you are bitching and complaining now. Every few months. Okay, so... That's messed up, if that is true. You know, like I said, you can do voice stuff, but that sounds horrendous if that is Tate. Does sound exactly like him though, but you know, like I said guys, you know, don't trust everything on the inset. So it'll all come out in the court case soon, so. Andrew would send me on a different number. Message to remind me of how dangerous he was. I thought I'd remind you of the caliber of man I am. I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Scare tactic. That's, that was kind of retarded. I'm like, like, why would you just send that to someone random? What the hell? To, to make sure I wouldn't go anywhere, go to the police, wouldn't report, would always be under his control. It was always to remind me that he was there. After six months, Amelia eventually left Andrew when she says she began to fear for her own life. In 2014, she also decided to report the incident to police, who logged it. A year after, I got a phone call from a police officer from Hertfordshire Police. <sighs> you know, here's the thing, guys. I, I actually probably believe her, right, in a way. Um, I don't even know. It hasn't come out in the trial yet. It'll all come out in the trial, but, like... I just wouldn't not even go around Tate. Like, if I heard any sort of activity like this, guys, you know, you gotta be so careful nowadays. You know, really careful. I always preach on this channel, man. Be super careful with all this type of stuff because you never know who you're kind of dealing with, you know? She said to me, we have two other girls that have come forward and said the exact same thing as you. Would you please be willing to come onto this investigation to make this case stronger. And without any hesitation, I said yes. And I thought, well, if there's two other girls, I'm not alone now. I'm not alone. That's, I mean, that's terrible, guys. That is terrible, absolutely right. One of those women was Sally. She was 20 when Andrew Tate approached her for webcam work. Due to fears of harassment from his fan base, she is also withholding her real name. First night that I worked for him, Andrew bought me like five bottles of wine. So I got completely drunk because I'd never done webcam work. So I was very, very nervous. Then that night, we were just sitting on the bed and Andrew punched me in my arm. I went to the bathroom and cried. It really, really hurt to have someone just hit me in the arm for no reason. I was very confused. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, I don't want to cry. It's okay. Um, so then when I came out of the bathroom, he was super, super nice. Like, 
from what I remember, Andrew didn't have any alcohol at all. It was literally just me. That night we cuddled and we ended up having sex and I was really, really drunk. That was my first night. Then it was kind of like every single night I would work. Were there any other instances where there was physical abuse? He used to, um, he used to strangle us as well. There was another time when he came into the bedroom. Me and the other girl, we would sleep in the same bed with Andrew. But at this time, the girl had a partner, so she was not interested in Andrew at all. And I had gone to the shower, I came back, and I noticed he was, I saw him raping her. What? And, um, when he threatened to beat me up in the bathroom and he said, oh, I don't give a fuck if you call the police, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. That's kind of when I knew, you know, I had to get out of there. I stopped working for Andrew about March, April time and I went to the police shortly after that. Nothing was done, really. The other girl that he had raped, she went to the police and then that's when they arrested him and took him into custody for like two days. When um, Andrew was arrested, we were taken in for a proper interview and it kind of just got left. I would send emails asking them to update, I'd hear nothing back. When we reached out to Hertfordshire Police about this, they had this to say. We acknowledge that there were some delays to the investigation. This was addressed at the time and apologies were made. The decision to prosecute based on the police's evidence would be up to the Crown Prosecution Service. Unfortunately, they turned around and just said, oh, we can't continue this case anymore. It's just insufficient evidence. They openly what? said. That's like, I mean, guys, that's nothing to be taken lightly. That's like one, probably the most serious crime that you can commit. And to just say there's no evidence based on this is crazy. There should have been like a huge trial on that, guys. Right? Why did nothing happen? That's crazy. It's really, really difficult to prove rape. Very difficult. The Crown Prosecution Service said in... But it's not difficult to... It's not difficult to prove strangulation. Like, you you know, you'll have marks on your neck and stuff from it, right? I don't know. In this case, we carefully reviewed all the evidence provided by the police regarding each complainant and concluded it did not meet our legal test and there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. Hmm. So basically it was just hearsay. It wasn't actual... There was no evidence to suggest that he did something violent and, you know, the aftermath, let's say, or something like that. Well, I mean... I trust the legal process, but if they got that wrong, that's a huge slip up, guys. That's like not good. But, you know, the prosecution said that there was nothing wrong. I mean, in the UK, only one in a hundred reported rapes result in a charge, let alone a conviction. That's insane. In a statement issued via his lawyer in Romania, Tate denied the assault or rape. He said, they wanted money because I fired them. The police understood after the investigation that I am innocent and the police found messages from the girls' phones where they were talking between themselves and planning to lie about me. Oh, okay, so yeah. So there you guys have it, man. I'm not saying it's true, but if they didn't, if they didn't actually, because that's a very serious crime, you guys, to rape is insane. That's like the most, that's one of the most serious crimes in the world. And it just literally says their police found messages from the girls' phones and they were planning to lie about me and the prosecution did nothing. So that'll kind of tell you everything you need to know about that, guys. People can just lie, they can just make up lies about you and try and ruin your career, but thankfully the legal system works and nothing happened. Now, I don't know, did, did that actually happen or not, guys? Like I said, I'm not defending Tate. If it did happen, you know, piece of shit scumbag. But, you know, if the police found messages from the girls, you know, why didn't they ask the police about that? I mean, I guess they did kind of in, directly because the police didn't prosecute Tate, I guess, but I don't know, yeah. It'll all come out in the trial as well, guys, you know? Sally said, the CPS sent a letter saying that one of the reasons they didn't charge Tate was because they found voice notes on our phones where we talked about whether we should tell the police that he gave us alcohol. We were talking about it because that is what happened. He used to get us drunk. They clearly didn't think just So these days, what are you getting from hating me because I'm a terrible person? Mr. Fucking Nice, yeah, I love her. And while you let me, while still debating it together, you're not. I like, conf I like to conflict you have, and don't have it. Don't makes you feel powerful. No. It's from a man to a woman saying I love raping you, 
um, I know what I do to you is abusive and controlling. Jesus. To CPS, apparently, that's not enough. Those are actual texts from Tate. Tate actually texts that? I did the bravest thing I think I ever done in my life, which was hell for years of absolute hell going through an investigation without anyone knowing and basically to do it alone it was all a waste. Despite repeated requests, Tate's lawyer did not provide a response to Amelia's allegations. The Romanian investigation into Andrew Tate and his brother finally led to an arrest on the 29th of December. The Matrix has attacked me. Police accused them of using the Loverboy method to traffic at least six women into a Romania-based webcam sex business. So the Loverboy method isn't illegal, but it is, like I said, unethical or some shit like that. This is now the second police investigation into oh, Andrew. Actually, I think it is illegal, but it's like a roundabout way. I'm not really sure, but they haven't been charged with anything yet, though. That's why they're still in jail, right? They're, they haven't been given a bail yet. The Tate that we know about. Andrew and Tristan Tate deny all allegations. His followers are obsessed with the idea that the Matrix is conspiring against him. But if anyone in the story is the victim of a conspiracy, is it the multi-millionaire celebrity? Or is it the women who claim they were abandoned by the system? You know, you see all these young men talking about how he's such a great guy and He's their idol and stuff, and that's so difficult to see. There are better role models out there. Don't be fooled by all the money and the nice cars and all the women. Working on yourself and becoming a better man and better mindset. Yeah, but real men don't lay their hands on women. That's true. That's true. Deny all allegations of wrong Dude, I really want to see what comes with this trial. This is going to be crazy. So, all right, pretty much the whole thing was just basically shit on Tate. Tell me what you guys think in the comment down below. Chat, please. I put an hour into this video, so please tell me what you guys think. I love you all, man. Please subscribe to my Patreon. I have lots of more controversial videos there. All that good stuff. Please subscribe to my Patreon. Like I said, I love you all, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.